What's up everybody, Thrills Metal here once again. I'm Necrognik and I have yet another album review for you. So another one that came out on the 4th of November that I definitely have my eye on because I've been a fan of this band pretty much since the start was the newest album from Black Anvil, Regenesis. This again comes out on November 4th on Season of Mess Records. This band formed in New York City in 2007. This is their fifth album overall and again I have been a fan since their debut Time Insults the Mind. I really liked their blend of like kind of hardcore D beats and thrash metal and black metal. Like they're technically a black and thrash band, but I don't know if you can necessarily call them that now. I think it's more of a black metal project now, but there's also other elements. It's kind of interesting when you consider the origins of this band being more rooted in the New York hardcore scene, namely the band Kill Your Idols. So it's kind of interesting when it comes down to their origins being not rooted in black metal directly, but actually kind of coming into it later through a different scene somehow. But I think it was really cool that early on you could really hear that sort of hardcore bite in a lot of their material. It kind of gave their sound like that same sort of like crusty fucking, you know, nastiness that you would hear in a band like Toxic Holocaust. But with their last album as was, they sort of changed up styles and went for longer, more intricate songs with more atmosphere and maybe not necessarily black metal, but like black metal influenced heavy metal, maybe even arguably prog in some regards. There was a lot more softer, clean material, more clean vocals. And that kind of made me curious about this one because it's been a while since their last album. I believe As Was was 2015, 16, somewhere in there. And I don't know if they've really done much in between. I recently did see them on tour with Immolation, the last time I saw Immolation, and I was kind of reminded, I was like, oh yeah, this band's still around. I really wasn't sure what happened to them. And then I saw they had an album on the horizon, so I was like, well, I want to check this out. It has been a while. And pretty much, I would say this album is a black metal album at its core, and it has other elements on it. Like, you do get a little bit of thrash metal because their roots are still in black and thrash, I guess. And you also have elements of, like, classic heavy metal infused in there, which is kind of carryover from As Was. The songs are shorter than they were on As Was, and I want to say the black metal elements kind of really come through on this one. Like, there's more blast beats, there's more cold tremolo riffs. It's a very atmospheric, lush sound. It's cold, but it's like a damp cold. It's not like the dry, icy cold that you would associate with like Norwegian raw black metal, like second wave. There's definitely elements of that in terms of the writing on here, but overall the production feels a lot more lush sounding. Like there's a lot of reverb. It doesn't feel very raw. It actually feels very well produced and all the instruments really shine on here. And I would say a big carryover from As Was is Melody. Melody is a huge part of this. There are lots of like, Distant melodies on top of tremolo riffs, really pretty lead melodies, and clean vocals. There are a lot of clean vocals on here, and I would say probably more than there were on As Was, which was definitely an album where they really started pushing that. Songs like 8-Bit Terror, which when I looked at the title, I was like, man, am I going to have to make another Castlevania reference? Because I feel like I should make a Castlevania reference. Anyway. That song sort of leads in with almost sort of like a hardcore like tribal lead in but then it breaks down into more black metal or maybe black and heavy metal. Again, the melodies on here are very just, you know, hooky. Like it, it doesn't necessarily feel like straightforward black metal. It feels like it's pulling influences from a lot of different camps, especially when you get down to the end of the song where it feels like it's pulling some big classic heavy metal harmonies from bands like Iron Maiden and the Scorpions, albeit played through a black metal filter. But to complement all these leads and melodies, you have a lot of clean vocals and they're very layered. Like it sounds like they're multi-tracked and with loads of reverb on them. So it sounds like all of them are being sung in a giant cathedral, which seems kind of appropriate. Well, like a big haunted cathedral, not like let's go to church on Sunday cathedral. I don't think this band is about that, but they're very like chanty and it kind of adds a lot to the atmosphere. It sounds more creepy and sinister, but the hooks on it are very catchy. Like you're just kind of instantly drawn in by them. Backed up with solid riff work and contrasted well with really fucking dramatic, harsh vocals, which they do pair up pretty often on here. Honestly, there's a lot of moments where they just layer all the vocals and it sounds like there's like, you know, 30 people singing on it. Granted, I think there's only two vocalists actually listed on this, and I think one of them is the drummer, actually. Songs like this one and Silver and Steel in particular kind of really push the heavy metal envelope in terms of just the style, the riffs, 
The atmosphere is a little bit more gothic sounding than say like evil. And Silver and Seal, in case you actually own the CD or looked at the actual track list, yes, this is most definitely a tribute of some kind of typo negative, which again, I am all for. But I do like that this song is appropriately a little bit more gothic, a little bit more dreary. It's a little bit more mid-tempo too. A lot of the stuff, you know, it kind of bounces from like more heavy metal gallops to more just straightforward blast beats and tremolo riffs. This one really kind of stands out just for being, again, like a more mid-tempo gothy song. There's more clean melodies on it. And there's some really amazing vocal harmonies on it that are very catchy. And I like the fact that it isn't all harsh vocals on here. In fact, I think the clean vocals actually dominate on the song. And that really works because, again, you kind of want to get that typo and negative effect, or at least I think you do if you got the song titled that. Now there are definitely more black metal centric songs in here like In 2 and 29 which are both more black metal forward, more melodic black metal in fact. Like this has a lot of stuff that sounds a lot like necrophobic and maybe at its most harsh watane. Like it definitely has melodic hooks all over the place. It sounds aggressive but in a black metal sense and is always driven by melodies namely like lead tremolos, lots of dissonant melodies and the sort of lush creepy atmosphere that's all over here. And more pronounced hooks both in terms of the guitar work and in terms of once again the clean vocals that again are all over this. Now there's even a little bit of of like death metal and industrial metal on here the little interlude w or it's like two v's really close together i don't know which is a under two minute interlude but it's almost kind of like god flesh and skinny puppy kind of want to get in on the whole black metal game and just kind of pepper in their own little brand of strange creepy atmosphere and then you have grant us his love which Sounds like a very churchy song, but I don't think it is. But it opens up with what I would say are flat out death metal riffs. The tremolos are a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more brutal sounding. It kind of has the vibe of like Morbid Angel, but with like a bit of a black metal filter before it carries off into like, you know, tremolo riffs that are more black metal centric and blast beats. But I kind of like that that element was in there. And that was kind of a thing on here that I kind of missed. Like I'm more of a fan of the older stuff. Like I thought As Was was an interesting album at least. I thought it definitely branched them out, but it kind of left behind a lot of what I was really used to. Like those first two albums, namely, I think are really fucking good. And honestly, trying to find that more thrashy sound that they had before, there's really not a lot of that. There's a little bit on the bed. There's a section in the bridge where it turns into more of like a galloping, you know, chuggy riff that's definitely more reminiscent of their sound, but it's quickly abandoned in favor of kind of what they're doing now, which is more atmospheric black metal slash melodic black metal with a lot of clean vocals. And I like the clean vocals. I think they're really well done and they do add a lot. But I will say, I think they're on here too much. For having the impact that a big clean chorus or clean melody is supposed to have, I think they dominate the songwriting a little bit too much. If they don't have enough time to really stand up because they're constantly going. In fact, I want to say it's almost more of like a 50-50 split between the styles of vocals on this one. And again, I like them, but it's just maybe too much on here. Another complaint I can make is I think when they're going for more straightforward melodic black metal, they're good, but when they're trying to infuse it in like a different style, like namely the heavy metal flourishes on here, I think they're better. I think the melodies really lend themselves a little bit more to the music, especially with the clean vocals. I think that actually works a bit better. But when they do straight up black metal, it kind of feels a little bit generic or derivative. Not necessarily bad, it's just like, well, I feel like I've heard this before, and I think when it's more of a seasoning versus the main chorus, I think it works better because, again, when these heavy metal moments pop up or these thrashier sections pop up, albeit kind of minimally, they add something to it. Now, while I do like the variety in here, there are some moments in here that I feel just don't gel as well. Castrum Dolores has a bridge where it comes in with a deep, heavy, almost more death metal tremolo riff. And you're kind of expecting like, you know, a very dark, sinister voice to come through and then all of a sudden you get the clean vocals. And again, while they're good, they have their own sort of creepy atmosphere to them. It's not necessarily like the most impactful style to really match that moment. I just feel like it was a little bit off there. And while I really like Grant Us His Love, I think it's a really awesome standout track and the death metal elements on there really kind of make it stand out. There is a section towards the end that I just think is weird and kind of shoehorned in there. There's a part where the music sort of drops out or fades out and all of a sudden you get horns, but they're like synthesized horns and they sound more like a college marching band than they do like 
sinister horns of doom or evil or whatever they were going for. That is reinforced when you hear marching snares come in and I'm pretty much taken out of the black metal show in favor of watching the halftime show at some college game. I don't know what this whole transition is about and it does eventually go back to the main riff of the song that it opens up with, but I'm like, what happened there? I just don't know. Like, I feel like there was maybe them trying to do too much to sort of uh, spice up the atmosphere, make it sound more epic, and all it did was land them at the 50-yard line of a college stadium. Maybe that's where they wanted to be. I don't know. It was just sort of an odd moment. You also have a section in here where Danny Diablo does guest vocals, and it's kind of interesting, but I think he kind of gets lost in the mix. Like, he's doing a spoken word spot in the beginning, but it's kind of really muffled and staticky, and you already have these very, you know, distant sounding guitars. So it kind of unfortunately gets lost. And seeing his name on there was kind of hoping for a little bit of that hardcore fucking, you know, nastiness to come out in the music. And what I got was just, you know, kind of a mid tempo, blackened, heavy metal thrash song. I don't know. Like, it's just sort of a mid tempo song, and it kind of unfortunately feels like filler. Honestly, I got more of a hardcore vibe when it came down to the almost gang shouts around Echoes and Tapestry, which I think is an awesome track on here. This pretty much combines almost everything they're trying to do here. You have more death metal moments, you have a thrash metal fucking riff that really fucking stands out with blast behind it. You also have doomy heavy metal harmonies and all this stuff is really working well together. In fact, I think it's probably the most dynamic song on here. There's really good groovy sections, there's an awesome epic lead, and this was kind of a thing where, you know, like this was kind of all the ideas they had and all the different influences that they're trying to bring into this album coming together in a really good form. And you do get a lot of that on here, but you definitely get some songs that feel maybe a little bit uneven and maybe occasionally directionless. This is still a pretty fun album though. And again, I get that they're sort of transitioning their sound a little bit. Like this is definitely back a little bit towards their more like heavy roots. It isn't as was, but it's certainly not their earlier albums. But either way, I still think it's pretty damn good. So overall, I'm gonna give this three stars. I think this is pretty solid. I like the blackened heavy metal aspect. Like honestly, that's one of the things that really stood out to me. I love the harmonies, the guitar leads. I think there's really solid riff work on here. I love the clean vocals, though I think they need to be maybe a little bit more sparse. Again, not that I think they're bad. I think they're actually really good. It's just if you use them less, I think they stand out a little bit more like as a chorus and not just like, you know, clean vocals all the time unless you're firmly committed to going that direction entirely, which that would leave the harsh guy out. And I think the harsh vocals in here are really solid. So I don't know, I think it's maybe like a less is more sort of thing. Some of the extra stuff that's on here, again, that very strange break in Grant Us His Love and maybe the interlude that's very industrialish, you know, it just kind of feels like filler at this point. And this album runs a little bit over 50 minutes. That just feels like a little bit extra. But overall, this is still a really good album. It's sinister, it's dark. It's almost sort of an occultish vibe to it. Lots of good melodic hooks, but also still a lot of that cold, dark, sinister energy that you kind of look for in black metal or black metal adjacent things. I don't know. I feel like I should just flat out call this black metal because I feel like that's the bulk of this. But there's, a, again, a lot of other elements on here that sort of me want to call it blackened something or other. Either way, strongly recommend checking this out. I'm honestly a bigger fan of their earlier material, but I would still say give this a chance. I think if you like stuff like Watain, maybe even Tribulation, and Necrophobic, you're going to find some stuff you really like on here. So definitely check them out. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there, as well as our store. We have shirts. We don't have extra larges, but we still have all the other sizes. We also will be getting some new merch eventually. I'm not entirely sure when, but we're still trying to figure out what we want to sell. And we also have audio versions of summer episodes. If you'd like to listen to us rather than look at us, totally get it, though I think listening to us might be just as bad. And of course, thank you so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that shit. During one of these edits, I actually had to get up and kill a massive fucking hornet that was in my basement. I don't know how it got down here, but it was fucking huge. Maybe the queen of a fucking colony. I don't know. She's fucking murdered. Anyway, I just wanted to share that story because I had to calm down a little bit because that fucker was huge. But anyway, thank you all so much, and we will catch you later.